Hollows Koalas, a one, two, three count art with me. One, Picasso Panda. Two, Kahlo Koalas. Three, Lichtenstein Llamas. Four, Matisse Monkeys. Five, Pollock Poodles. Six, King Kadinsky Kangaroos. Seven, Van Gogh Geckos. Eight, Surat Slots. Nine, Warhol Warthogs. Ten, Monet Mice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now we're going to look at the gallery of artists. Pablo Picasso. If Pablo Picasso had painted a panda, he would have used lots of unexpected shapes and colors. His painting would make you think you were looking at a panda from lots of different angles all at once. This clever style is called cubism. Frida Kahlo, I hope I'm saying that right. Frida Kahlo's paintings were inspired by her beautiful garden of homeland Mexico and her own fiery personality. If she had painted koalas, she would have been sure to feature her flowery headdresses and trademark dark eyebrows on the cuddly creatures. Roy Lichtenstein. Roy Lichtenstein's art bursts from the canvas like a thwack, wham, or spat from a comic strip. His pop art paintings featured tongue-in-cheek scenes on top of dotty, colorful backgrounds. Henry Matisse. Henry Matisse's cutout collages are so full of joy that they seem to jump off the page and dance around the room. His bright, zesty images would have brought life to a, tr a troop of mischievous monkeys on the move. Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock knew how to make a splash. His paintings buzz with energy and combine drips, dribbles, and splashes of paint. Pollock's style of action painting is the perfect contrast to a prissy po potsy of parading poodles. Wassily Kandinsky. Wassily Kandinsky combines strange shapes, dashing lines, and daring colors. His images are described as abstract, which means that they don't look exactly like what we see in the real world. Instead, we fill the pictures with our own imagination and feelings. Vincent Van Gogh. Swirling lines full of movement and life dash around Vincent Van Gogh's paintings. It's easy to imagine he would draw geckos rushing and scrambling across the canvas. His wild and quickly painted brushstrokes would be, would be like colorful ripples flowing across a pond. George's Surratt. George's Surratt used teeny tiny dots of colors to build up larger images. His work became known as pointillism. Working like this was slow and painstaking, a bit like sleepy sloth in the trees, moving from branch to branch. Andy Warhol loved to make lots of prints of the same picture in a rainbow of different hues. But if he had painted in Painted a warthog, surely he couldn't have resisted showing it from the back as well as the front. And finally, Claude Monet. Monet painted dreamy scenes full of water lilies drifting across pretty ponds. His work was called Impressionism and gave the impression or feeling of light and moving objects floating gently across the canvas. The end.